Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a battle group preview of Kuruk 559. Please remember everything you are about to see is still in beta and therefore subject to change. Now this video is going to be a little different to my usual battle group previews in that we are covering today a battle group that's made for breakthrough defense. If you would like to see a Kuruk 559 battle group made for Conquest, make sure to let me know in the comments below. As you can see, this battle group uses the Vanguard deployment type, and I think it's one of the better deployment types for breakthrough defense, as it allows you to build up your defenses a lot quicker in phase A and really create that defense in depth that you need. You do suffer in phase B, but if you take this battle group and you find you're having issues in phase B, just switch it up to Maverick and you should be good to go. Aside from all that, Kuruk 559 is probably one of the most interesting divisions that we've seen so far. It's made up of both German and Russian security forces, the Russians having switched sides. It's a real ragtag bunch of units and there's plenty of captured stuff mixed in. So let's take a look. So starting in the recon tab, we have one of the most wacky looking units in the game. This is the SBW ADGZ. I've got one card of them in phase A with no veterancy. Now these are basically two armored cars welded back to back with a turret on top and they were originally used for policing, but in this case have been brought to the front line. They have a 20 mil in the turret and then they also have an MG 34. So these are good for close range infantry support and they're actually pretty nippy. They've got 45 km per hour off-road speed. My next choice is the captured BT2s, the Alfkrala Panzer 742R. This has a 45 mil gun and the thing that makes this really good is that it does have 88 HE shells, so great fire support against enemy infantry and it's not going to run out of ammunition very quickly whatsoever. It also has 100 AP shells with 75mm of penetration so it can do some damage to light and medium armoured targets. It only has 25mm of frontal armour though so watch out for those AT rifles and enemy light and medium tanks as well. But check out that speed, 54km per hour off-road speed. Absolutely nuts. Then there's the LVF Chasseurs in Phase B. I've got these with their one star veterancy and you can get four squads of them. They come with nine MP40s and an MG42, which means they can defend themselves very, very well whilst providing that recon information. And that's why I've chosen to bring these. Other choices in the recon tab are the BMW R75. It's your generic motorcycle recon with no armor therefore it can be killed very quickly by light arms fire. Then there's the Alfkrader. These are pretty cool because they can be brought in the SBW202 which is a captured BA20 and it has an awesome camo. Check that out. Then there's a card of Rona Speertroop. These are your classic four-man recon squad but the first of the Rona units that we are going to see and the Rona units were all Russian nationals that switch sides, which is why they're using Russian weapons. The next card you can choose is the SBW203. These are captured BA-10Ms, and these would be good if they had HE shells, but they do not, and they're not actually that quick, so I'm not a massive fan of these, that's for sure. You can also get a card of the SBW204s, now these panards are actually pretty good in that they have really nice rate of fire on their main gun so they are fantastic for cleaning up things like half tracks very quickly with that 25mm gun. They also have a machine gun with 30mm of frontal armour so they can be a nuisance for enemy infantry as well. The last card you can choose is the Kozakan. This is more Russian units with the two PPSH, nine Mosin Nagants and the DP. So pretty much just a standard infantry squad, except from they have the very good stealth and very high optics. The reason I don't take these is because they are less specialized than the LVF chasseurs, 
and they cost a little bit more. Moving on to the infantry tab, we have another of the Rona squads, the Rona Pioneers. These are a Russian squad with eight SVTs and two HE grenades, so they're specialized for killing enemy infantry at both close and medium range. Then I have a card of the Rona Schutzen, which are a bit more of an all-round squad with the three submachine guns instead of just one. And they've also got a Faust Patron for killing enemy armor, but it only has 120 meter range, so bear that in mind. Then I have a card of the Citerungs in Phase A. You can get nine of these on a card, and they have Car 98s. They also have the MG15, but the way in which these should be used, in my opinion, is around the AT rifle that they have. It's a 300 meter range AT rifle with 60 millimeters of penetration. It's great for taking out enemy transports and also light armored vehicles in the early game. So if you exploit the 300 meter range, you can really make good use of these. Then we have the first of the SS Shupo units. This is military police and they give you a seven strength command squad, which is really, really nice. They have three smoke grenades as well. So a very, very awesome command squad. Then I have a card of the Grenadiers. These come with Panzerfaust. I'm bringing them in phase B with no veterancy. You get the Car 98s, the MG34, pretty standard stuff, but also a Panzerfaust with the 240 millimeters of penetration as opposed to the 180 that the Faust Patron has. So yeah, just standard Grenadiers. Then I have the standard Pioneers. These are your anti-infantry units with their close range HE grenades. Then I've got a card of the Landesführer. Now these are probably one of the best command squads in the game in my opinion because they are a nine strength squad command squad with smoke it's very very nice actually but they will engage at super long range with their Mosin Nagants and MG26s so best to probably keep them on return fire until you really need to use them you can get four of them in phase B with a one star veterancy and the last card I have here are the LVF Grenadiers these are basically a standard Grenadier squad, but without the Panzerfaust, instead they have the H3. That's the only difference, more or less. Other choices in the infantry tab include the Fal Gendarmery, which are your standard four-man submachine gun squads. Don't really have too much effectiveness at the moment. Then there's the Schumer. You can actually get 15 squads of these in Phase A, and... They could be pretty useful actually for dotting around, but they lack damage in that they use the Mosin Nagants as opposed to something like an SVT or maybe more SMGs. Then there's the SS Shupo squads. This is again your military police. They have the MP28s, Car 98s, and then the MG26. Basically a standard infantry squad, but with no special weapon like a HE grenade or an AT grenade. Just uh pretty crappy really honestly compared to the other units and they're also disheartened so they will run away and the main reason that i don't use these the lander schutzen or the spielver band in this division is because on breakthrough defense you don't want your units to be pinned down and do a runner from places like trenches where they get the most damage resistance then the next card is the bmw motorcycle this is just waiting to die most of the time. Complete waste of a card, in my opinion. Then there's the Grenadier squads with the MG26. They're pretty much kitted out, the same as the SS Shupo. You just have one less man. Then there's the Landerschutzen squad, but the interesting thing about these Landerschutzen is they are the Landerschutzen Ost, which means they have this awesome machine gun, the Leichtes. MG0515, 0815, sorry, uh, which is a 750 meter range machine gun. And yeah, interesting squad with 11 men, but disheartened, no thank you. Then we have the Rona Führer. These are pretty decent squads as well, but I take the SS Super Führer because the SS Super Führer aren't disheartened uh, and you get like three more men. 
in comparison for an extra five points. That's fine by me. I'll take that trade. Then there is the uh, Spellverband. These are actually pretty cool in that they have a Panzer Shrek. But again, the fact that they are disheartened makes me avoid picking them up. But in a Conquest game, most of the disheartened units are actually pretty useful, so bear that in mind. Next up we have the Tank Tab, and this is where things really get mixed up. The first card that I have here is the Panzer 3G in Phase A. You can get two of these on a card, they only cost 20 points a pop. They give you a 50mm gun with uh, AP and HE shells with two machine guns. They're actually pretty nice infantry support, mostly. That penetration is not going to get through much though, except from early game light armor. And their own armor won't protect them from much either. Then there's the 25 point Panzer 7TP. This is a Polish tank that has 37mm gun with 70mm of penetration. It does also have some HE shells of its own and its machine gun. So again, a nice infantry support tank. Furthermore, we move on to the next infantry support tank, which is the Panzer 2C. This thing has a 20mm auto cannon and it can rip through infantry. It really can. And that's basically what you're going to be using it for, bringing them in without any veterancy in phase A. Then there's the Panzer T-70. This is a captured T-70. You can get two of them in phase A with no veterancy, and they come with a 45mm gun which is equipped with HE shells. So again, another unit for supporting your infantry. You're probably getting the, the idea here. <laughs> Most of the tanks in phase A especially are there to support your infantry. Same goes for this Valentine, which is a captured Valentine, of course. Probably a lend lease Valentine that the Russians had that the Germans picked up. Anyway, it has 40mm AP shells with 15 round per minute rate of fire, so it can clean up things like half tracks and enemy light vehicles very quickly, and then has a machine gun. Uh, which you can use on infantry. It's 80 millimeters of armor is actually not too bad so maybe worth rolling in from the start of the game. We'll get to the battlefield just about when phase B starts due to its really slow speed. The only other tanks I have in phase A are the Panzer T3442s. This is just a captured T34 with its standard 100mm penetration and 90mm of frontal armour. It does have two machine guns, so can help pin down infantry quite nicely. Very, very fast off-road though for a tank, and can be nice for reacting to wherever your enemy pushes if you play in Breakthrough, which if you're using this battle group, you should be doing. Then I have the card of Tigers. They're going to be coming in in Phase B. In Phase A, you only get one of them, in phase B you get two, and in phase C you get four. But most of the time you're going to want to bring them in phase B, I think. In phase C, I think it's just a little bit too late for breakthrough defense. But that could potentially work in Conquest if you hold on that long. They do come in at two-star veterancy, so you only need like a command nearby, like a leader nearby, sorry, without command, and then they're already three-star, so that's nice. And while they have the same stats as every other Tiger, the 165mm of penetration, it's going to be chunking through most enemy tanks other than things like IS-2s, for example. So, yeah, awesome tank. Then I have a card of the T-3441s in Phase C. That's a very old tank. Uh, it comes in with 75mm of frontal armor, but does still have the 100mm of penetration on its main gun but the reason I've got these in phase C is just to kind of bulk and react to wherever I need to l the later the game gets and it just gives you that little bit extra armor for if you need to make any counter pushes in certain areas or whatever. The only other choices in the tank tab include the Panzer 35R which just doesn't match up to like any of the other tanks that we have access to although you do get a decent availability of them. And then there's the Panzer T60, which has an autocannon with a hell of a lot of ammunition. So honestly, you could potentially replace these with the Panzer 2C in order to get a bit more bang for your buck. And honestly, I, I might even recommend it. 
over my current choice. Overall though, the tank tab is just an absolute mess. You have all of these light tanks in phase A, which struggle against most of the stuff you're going to be coming up against. So make sure you use them smartly, keep them in cover, utilize close range engagements, and that's where you'll win out. The only tank in phase A that you have access to in this battle group that has any form of bite is the T3442s. Make sure you use them to react to enemy pushes as opposed to having them down from the start. The support tab in Kodak 559 is just as much of a mess. There is so many different units to be choosing from here and most of them are just machine gun squads. But the first card that we have here is quite an interesting one. This is the VK-1801. It's a tank with 80 millimeters of frontal armor, which means that it's pretty much immune to 80 rifle fire and therefore can be fantastic for dealing with infantry squads at close range. It has two MG-34s. You place a bit of barbed wire in front of this at like 120 meters away and you'll be laughing. These can be absolutely fantastic in defensive positions in light forests. Next up, I have a card of the Opal Blitz Munitions, bringing these in in Phase A to provide me with repairs for my limited amount of tanks, but also ammunition for my artillery. Then I have the Commander Squad, the LVF Commandant. It's important to have command set up in Phase A in Breakthrough, uh, so that you can have all your leaders double buff your bunkers. So make sure you've set up a decent command structure with your defenses. And I have another card of Opal Blitz Munitions in Phase B for more artillery support with um, the ammunition there, of course. And then I have the Phase B commander in case the first one gets killed, since you are going to be under a lot of pressure and breakthrough, that's for sure. Other squads available in the support are the Flammenwerfer. These are your standard two-man flamethrower squads with the four smoke grenades. You can actually get nine of them on a card in phase A, but I just don't find a slot to put them in. Then there's the 50 millimeter mortars, standard stuff with the 520 meter range. They do have 28 round per minute ready fire, can pin down enemy infantry quite quickly, especially infantry that doesn't have machine guns. Then there's the Rona Maxin, this is your Russian machine gun squad. They've got a strength of four with 1,000 meter range. Then there's the IG-290. I believe this is the Russian captured gun, but all of these infantry guns are a bit lackluster at the moment. Then there's the LVF MG-34. This is your MG-34 with 1,500 meter range. Very similar to the MG42, except from the MG34 has slightly less suppression. This squad also has a strength of three, as opposed to this MG42 squad that has a strength of four. In between those is the MG08, which is a Schwerer's MG08 with the 1000 meter range there. It does have a strength of four, but uh, yeah, it's not very good. It don't, don't, you do get quite a lot of availability for that. The Rona Maxim and the MG08 providing six units on a card, as opposed to the MG34s where you get four, and the MG42s where you get three in phase A with one star veterancy, that is. Then, to finish it all off, there is the phase C commander, which is the Befell Panzer III. The same camo, actually, from Star Division Normally 44, I believe. And that's your lot for support. Now we have the anti-tank tab. And the first couple cards we have here are the pack 36, 37 mils. You can get these in phase A with two star veterancy. That's pretty much preset. I've got both cards. These can be fantastic for ambushing at 800 meter range because they do have a rocket that they can put on the front of them. It does have 180 millimeters of penetration. Just bear in mind that it only has 30% accuracy. The veterancy they have does help with that a little bit, but they do miss quite often and that can be quite frustrating. Otherwise, the AP shells can be used for killing transports at long range, so you could have one of these covering a road early on. Uh, just bear in mind they will get absolutely demolished by like tanks with any form of armor. 
And to basically get past that, I do have the pack 40s in phase A. You get three of them in phase A with no veterancy, and these are, provide you with the 190mm APCR shells, as well as the standard 145mm AP shells, as well as HE shells. But one thing I will say, don't let the HE shells don't uh, give away your position with these guns because they are quite valuable for taking on enemy armor since you don't have many units that provide that much armor piercing capability and in phase b i have a card of the fk 288 these have 105 millimeters of penetration but similar to the pack 40s don't let these give themselves away with the he shells as you will need to use them as at specific units and these are coming in at phase B with no veterancy. Other choices in the anti-tank tab include, first of all, these AT rifle squads. They have a Panzer Buxer 39, which has 25 millimeters of penetration. Now that penetration is seriously lacking, but they do have 45% accuracy and 500 meter range, which can make them decent for sniping transports for you since they do have exceptional stealth. So if you make like mini trenches for these and dot them around, I could imagine they'd be pretty decent in a breakthrough defense, but they don't find a way into my battle group this time around. Their availability is quite nice as well. Next card is the Pac-184, which is the 45 mil Russian AT gun. Without its APCR shells, this thing is definitely lacking in penetration, although it could be used to find side shots and you do get a reasonable amount of them. Then there's the other card of the FK-288. Next up we have the anti-air tab of Kuluk 559 and it's pretty lackluster. The first card that I have here is the Flak 36-37mm. You can get two of these in phase A at one star veterancy, which means that if you put them near your commander you can actually make these three star veterancy in phase A, which for an AA unit is pretty damn good because you can shoot down fighters quite easily for sure and definitely suppress enemy attack aircraft before they hit your lines. Next card I have is the Flak M39. Uh, these are your long range anti-air but the main reason that I'm focusing on the these and also the AT8 in the anti-air tab of Kuruk is so that I have these for the AP capability as well. So I'll place them in more sort of deep defense areas where they're covering open ground from the 2000 meter range, but then can also be used as AA in the meantime. So that's kind of what these create is like a second line of defense. And before that helps you to enemy aircraft. And then in phase Z, I do have the Flak 4188 mils that I already mentioned. These have decent penetration at 160 millimeters, whilst also providing the anti-air fire. So basically a good dual purpose gun that can help you out in the late game if you need some more AT, because you seriously lack AT with like over 100 millimeters of penetration in this division. The only other choice in the anti-air tab is the Flak 3820 mils. You can actually get 12 of these on a card in phase C, you get eight in phase B and four in phase A. So if you want to flood the map with cheap AA, this is definitely the way to do it. Just bear in mind that they are disheartened, so they will take more suppression from artillery fire and also aircraft themselves. And then they retreat automatically. It's, it's a bit of a mess sometimes, so I prefer to go for the units that don't have the disheartened trait, especially for breakthrough defense. The artillery tab of Kodok 559 is also pretty lackluster. The first card that I have is the LAFH 18 M105 mils, got three of them in phase A with no veterancy, and I've also got the same card in phase B, except from they cost five points more because of the transport that I bring them in. But these are good, they have radios, they can provide you with smoke support if you need it. And yeah, not too bad. Other choices in the artillery tab include the 81mm mortar. These are nice, cheap and effective smoke if you need it, whilst also providing the HE shells. You can get a decent amount of them, but I prefer to have the bigger guns that uh, can help you counter battery if needs be, since it's quite common in a breakthrough game to see a lot of artillery from the start. 
Then there's the FK296. This thing's actually pretty good, except from I'm not sure it has a radio and its HE is very limited. Like it's only got three damage. So not as good as the 105 mils for like the long range RT engagements. There is a card of Nebelwerfers, or should I say a Nebelwerfer, because you can only bring in one of these and it's in phase A. It's a nice artillery weapon, don't get me wrong, but the fact that you only get one of them uh, kind of moves me away from picking it. Then there's the SFH 396 122mm. This apparently can be really quite good. Uh, Gonzo mentioned to me that these heat shells are actually worth using since they, he, they do have 10 of them with 160 millimeters of penetration. So you could use these as kind of part of your defense in depth if you have them behind the front line, but within range to engage at 2000 meter range if the front line gets it, like destroyed, then maybe you can take out any tanks that are pushing a little bit too far forwards, whilst also providing the HE shells that can uh, demolish like light armored targets and also infantry, of course. And these don't have radios, so their longer range capability is quite limited. Then there's the Multia Vilfachwerfer. You're probably quite surprised that I don't have this, but since it doesn't have any armor, it can be killed very, very quickly by counter battery. And the rockets aren't actually all that effective. They can suppress an area, but very slowly compared to other rocket units. So I've basically been put off this after using it a few times. Now we have the air tab, and the first card you can see I have here is the JU-87G in phase A with no veteran C. These are pretty good because they get a decent amount of time on target with their 270 km per hour speed. And they also have 140 mils of penetration. So they're great for just picking off those pesky armored targets in the early game before your opponent has built up any form of AA or has an air force of their own to contest you with. Then I have a card of the ME109 G6s to give a little bit of air supremacy early on and help take down enemy fighter bombers and enemy bombers. They will struggle a little bit with bombers since they don't have any guns in their wings. And there's more JU87Gs in Phase B. I'm bringing these ones in at one star veteran C. Uh, you get a little bit less availability, only two on the card because of that, as opposed to four. But with the extra veteran C, they are that little bit more effective and uh, can be definitely very lethal. And then I've got another card of the ME109 G6s, again, for maintaining air superiority. And finally, I have a card of the ME410A1s, with 500 kilogram bombs uh, to kind of just stop pushes in areas uh, that may be a little bit more vulnerable. Other choices in the air tab include the uh, Focke-Wulf 58C. This is just your standard recon aircraft. Doesn't have any form of weapons to defend itself, but does have better resilience than your standard Storch which is why it costs a bit more. Then there's the JU-87 D5, which is your Recon Stuka. Does actually have quite a lot of forward-facing guns. Well, it has two 20 mils facing forwards, uh, which is a reasonable amount of damage, actually, and can take down things like IL-2s, which aren't too much faster than it. Then there is the JU-87 D5, which comes with the two twin 20 mil gun pods good for suppressing ground targets but that's about it won't really kill too much so i tend to stick away from these and there's the me410 with the eight 50 kilogram bombs i found after testing these that they tend to miss the mark quite often and even if they do hit they struggle to suppress what you hit so i've moved to the 500 kilogram bomb variant because of that. Then there's the HS129B2R2. Bear in mind this is a 30 mil auto cannon which does not have any armor penetration. So again, good for suppressing ground targets, but doesn't have that much lethality. 
Then there's JU87D5s, which come in with two 250 kilogram bombs and one 500 kilogram bomb. It's quite a decent payload actually, and you could definitely swap these out for the MU410 if you prefer. Just bear in mind they're a hell of a lot slower. And finally, there's another card of ME109 G6s if you want them. Finally, we have the defense tab, and it's well worth talking about since we are creating here a defensive breakthrough battle group. So the first card that I have is barbed wire, and barbed wire is fantastic for keeping the enemy where you want them. So place it at the distance your bunkers are engaging at. So if your AT bunker has a line of sight of say 600 meters because you placed it a little bit deep into say some light forest, then place some barbed wire there. Keep your enemy where you want them, at the range you want them. And that's what barbed wire is really good for. It's also good for slowing down choke points. So slowing down units that are trying to move through a choke point. Then there's trenches. Uh, you can make them longer trenches for your standard infantry squads, but then you can see that you can make quite small trenches. And these smaller trenches are great for units like the Panzerbuchser, AT rifle squads and they can hide in those and gain the defensive bonuses from them quite well. So trenches can be quite versatile and the nice thing about trenches is that they can't be destroyed like buildings can. So maybe use the trenches inside towns so that you constantly have a defensive line there even if the buildings around you get destroyed. Then there's the MG bunkers. Now these have a couple use. Uh, at closer ranges, they're actually quite lethal against infantry, and they can pin down infantry at long range. But one thing I like to use the MG bunkers for is just attracting enemy fire. So you leave these in a relatively open area, and tanks can actually have a hard time killing these, but they will like accidentally fire at them. So they can be a little bit of a bait, which is quite interesting. Then there's the 50mm bunkers. We have uh, two cards of these in phase A with no veterancy. These have 100 mils of penetration, got a pack 38 inside them. Great ambushing bunkers. Definitely make good use of these. Try and put them in places where they'll find side shots onto enemy tanks. Then there's the 75mm bunkers, which have 145mm of penetration. And you can get away with putting these in more open areas, but not too far forwards. I would keep them say 1,500 meters or 2,000 meters behind your initial front line so they have a bit more survivability and then can find the kills onto the important units that do end up breaking through. Uh, I didn't mention what I chose for my MG42s. I've got two cards of them with one star veterancy in phase A. Uh, the only other choices here in the defense tab are the gun pits, which I don't tend to use that often, but are good for anti-air units and also artillery if you want to sort of reduce the amount you get counter-batteried. I wouldn't recommend putting AT guns in them though. Um, use AT guns in heavy forest. I find that's always a lot better. And then there is the 37mm in a bunker, but not as effective as the 50mm or 75mm. You do get more of them. And they are cheaper, but yeah, I think you want a bit more bang for your buck where bunkers are concerned. And that's your lot. Kodok 559, certainly a very interesting division. But with the units that you have, you're mainly going to be playing around at close range. You want to try and find ambushing positions as much as possible for your lighter tanks in phase A. Also, your lighter AT guns. Uh, you're going to want to exploit your AT airplanes early on. And with all your bunkers, make sure they're in less obvious positions, except from maybe the MG42 bunkers, if you want to purposefully draw fire towards them. But it's all about just having smart defenses in the right places, and this can be quite a good division on defense. But that's it from me. As always, I will leave the battle group code in the description. Make sure to say in the comments if you'd like to see me build a Kuduk 559 Conquest battle group. 
But that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.